So, last class we have solved a problem that is we have to optimize a functional, agree? we have to optimize a functional without any constraint. That means, unconstrained optimization problem we have seen how to solve using calculus of variation technique. Then we have considered the application of calculus of variation to control problems. If and we could not complete that whole exercise, so let us recollect what we have discussed last class. Consider a dynamic system described by x dot is equal to f, which is a function of the variable state and the control input to the system u t and time. So, this may be a linear function, may be a nonlinear function, which we did it that a dynamic system which is, which can be described by a another differential equation that dynamic equation is converted into a n first order differential equation and they are coupled each other and that differential equation may be linear or nonlinear. So, our problem is to optimize this performing index. What is this performing index? One term of the performing index is the functional integral <coughs> integral of the functional and another is a fixed measure is terminal cost. That means, x time t is equal to t f, this state is x t f is known and t is, is equal to t f, that terminal cost is given. So, you have to optimize this performing index in order to find out u to u of t control input such that that performing index is minimized and it as well as it satisfies the dynamic equation. So, the control input will dictate the response of what is called state. So, we have a performing index, this is index i n omitted i. So, i n index. So, this is the system input is there, we have to design that input such that the performing index is minimized in our case. In the sense that this is the <coughs> integral part of the per, per performing index and is the fixed part of the performing index, which is the terminal t is equal to t f, this terminal cost is known to us. Okay. <coughs> so, our objective is now that if you see u of t, you find out u of t that minimizes the performing index that why what we have considered subject to the constraint 1, subject to the constraint 1, that our constraint is that dynamic equation, this dynamic equation is the constant. So, this is a what is called constant optimization problem. Previously, we have discussed the minimization of a functional without any constraints, but here now we are considering the constraints and this problem is also known, known as Bolgia problems. So, what we did it that terminal cost, what is the terminal cost that we want we like to push it in the integrand part of this performing index. So, this terminal cost that d f s d t d t we can write it in this. So, this terminal cost, this is the terminal cost, cost. the terminal cost will be expressed in terms of integral and that constant term, because t is equal to 0 and the terminal cost is fixed known. So, using this equation in our original performing index that we get it this one, agree? just you put it the terminal cost expression in terms of this and this that what we have seen earlier slide. So, our problem minimization of performing index 2, minimization of performing index 2 that that one, minimization of performance 2 this one that performing index 2, this is because we have replaced this thing in terms of integral part and constant part is same as minimization of the performing index 4 subject to the constant x dot is equal to f of x that constant. So, up to this we have discussed last class. So, now this is the constant term. So, minimization of 4 is equivalent to minimization of this integral part of that one is same because constant term what is this minimization of that one at what point that what point or what trajectory of u t the function will be minimum with constant term also 
at that value of instead or trajectory the function will be minimized. So, instead of equation 4, we can rewrite the equation 4, the <coughs> we can write it optimization of optimization of equation 4 is equivalent to that of j is equal to this integration of t 0 to I am writing same expression except that constant term x of t u of t t d t plus t 0 to t f d s x of t which is a function of x and t s terminal cost into d t. So, minimization of that function is same as the minimization of this objective function. So, before that further derivation we just recollect what is called chain rule in differentiation. So, let us call we have a function f which is a function of x t, x is a function of x t, y also function of time parameter time t and z of t. Agree? We want to differentiate this with respect to time t, differentiation of this with t, this is a by chain rule del f del x into x dot d x d t, x dot of t plus del f del y, y dot of t plus del f del z, z dot of t. z is a function of time, so we differentiate this z with respect to time t, z of t. So, this chain rule I will apply here to find out this one. <coughs> so, see what one second anyway, f is a function of x, y, z and x is a function of time t, y is a function of time t. So, differentiation of x with respect to t is nothing but a partial differentiation of f with respect to x, because it is a function of x, y, z keeping y z constant you differentiate this one and then differentiation of x with respect to t. Differentiation of x with respect to y keeping x and z constant then multiplied by y dot. Similarly, differentiation of x with respect to z keeping x y constant then multiplied by z. So, this chain rule I will apply here because it is a s is a function of time x t and t. Agree? So, this I can write it then j is equal to j dot of this t 0 to t f then v as it is we write as it is this term we will write as it is this term x of t this is capital x of t u of t t d t and this we will write it by using chain rule. So, this will be a plus t 0 to t f. So, what we will write it differentiation of d s d t differentiation with respect to time t because s is a function of x t and t. So, what we will write it that one that will write del f del s with respect to x of t into that into that x dot of t x dot of t this is capital X plus del f del s of this with respect to d t and t differentiate with respect to time t that means, it is 1 that whole thing into d t. So, for this portion we have written that one. So, now see what we can simplify that one this expression if you consider this is equation number 6 agree 
this performance index that means equation 4 minimization of equation 4 is equivalent to minimization of equation 5 because in equation 4 there is a constant term is there okay. so optimize at what value of u you will get the maximum or minimum value of the objective function without considering what is without considering the constant term i will get the same stationary point mean u star of t to optimize this function Okay. So, equivalent it is equivalent to say the optimization of objective function 4 is equivalent to what is called optimization of objective function 5 subject to constraint same constraint what we can x dot is equal to f x of t u of t comma t. So, this equation this by using chain rule we have written this subject to our same constraint subject to x dot of t is equal to f x of t u of t of this, this is the subject. So, this is a what is called constraint optimization problems. We know very well how to in static optimization problems also we have seen how to convert a constraint optimization problem to a unconstrained optimization problem and then what we have discussed in calculus of variation is our first problem that if you have a functional what is called j which is a integrand part is v of x t comma x dot of t comma t d t then we know how to optimize that function. So, first our job is convert this problem uh, what is called constraint optimization problem to a unconstrained optimization problem. Our problem is find u, u such that find optimum trajectory of u such that this performing index or objective function is minimized subject to this constraints and that constraint is a dynamic equation. So, that let us call this is equation number 2. So, our job is convert convert equation 6 and 7 into unconstrained optimization problem using Lagrange multiplier. So, that is what we have discussed earlier that way we can do it. Next is what is our modified performing index when you use the concept of Lagrangian multiplier what is the our modified modified performing index. So, our j is equal to t 0 to t f v x of t u of t t d t plus integration of del s back a function of time x t this del x of t whole transpose see this one that part I am writing, but here you see if you consider x is a if you consider x is a vector of dimension n cross 1 then you have to it will be a row vector row vector multiplied by column vector then it is a scalar quantity the whole thing is a scalar quantity agree so this you have to take transpose agree transpose that one so that will be transpose into x dot of t plus del s x of t t del t this one and this whole is d t just this equation this and this I club together I am written in that one this plus because it is a 
unconstrained optimization problem, the constant optimization problem now I have converted into unconstrained optimization problems. Okay? So, Langrange multiplier is used and that dimension is if the dimension of x is n cross n that dimension will be n cross n and that must be a column a row vector because the product of this must be a scalar one. So, that is equal to f of x the dynamic equation the constant equation you can say this is t bracket this is t bracket minus x dot of t and this part is 0. So, I multiply it by constant what is called our Lagrange multiplier this is the Lagrange multiplier lambda e is Lagrange. So, this is the equation number I can write the whole thing if you write it this whole thing I can write that is uh, ok this bracket this whole thing you bracket it complete it here and d t. So, now see this performing index of that one is same as before because this part is 0 when it is optimize the function of that is our, our objective function this part will be because this must satisfy the our constraint it must be 0 that one. So, this I have just written it. So, that is equivalent to t 0 to t f t 0 this is t f t 0 to t f that I use the another function name is Lagrange function. So, that is a function of if you see x t u t then lambda t and t whole into d t that whole this plus this plus this plus this whole I am denoted by l. So, this is this l is called Lagrange function. So, let us call this equation number is 8. So, now you see it is now it is our original problem what we have considered we have to optimize a functional agree okay, without any constraint now it is becoming same problem. So, I we can apply the same technique what we have discussed earlier to find the optimal value of the functional subject there is no constraint agree. Okay. So, what is the necessary condition what is the sufficient condition we can easily derive. So, for your convenience I just will derive this one because L function now is different from V. So, let us see this one <coughs> where L which is a function of x of t u of t lambda of t and t which equal to V the integral part of that equation 8 I am writing. So, that is equal to v function of x of t e of t lambda of t and t okay. plus if you see this one <coughs> plus lambda this transpose then f of x of t u of t then t agree. So, what I did it here this term integral part this term and only this part I mean in not concerned this and this part I have written together this plus the remaining term. So, what is the remaining term is there del s del x of t of t del x of t this whole transpose into x dot of t plus del s which is a function of x t of t differentiation with respect to time t minus lambda transpose x dot of t. So, this is the things. So, this this and this that means 
which is a V and that lambda transpose of x transpose t. Okay. This we denoted by a function x h, which is a function of lambda x u t and lambda t and t. See this one. That means, if you just consider the integrand point of the objective function that plus the constraint what is uh, x dot is equal to f x f that constraint have right hand side of the constraint multiplied by a vector agree that term I have considering a function which is denoted by h and that h is called Hamiltonian Hamiltonian function. We will see if you split up this Lagrangian function into this form that will be convenient when we apply to a our control problems agree? and that control problem description when it is given into a state space form. It will be convenient when you will express this thing into a Hamiltonian form and what is the left of our terms this this this. So, del s x of t of this del x of t whole transpose x dot of t plus del s x of t t del t minus lambda transpose x dot of t. So, this is the equation. So, Lagrangian equation is nothing but a Hamiltonian function plus some of the differentiation of s terminal cos with respect to x transpose x dot plus differentiation of terminal cos this with d t and then minus lambda transpose into x dot is that one is expressed in this one. So, <coughs> once you do this one then I can write now this part of at part of condition what is the value of j at at the part of condition part of condition means if you see this equation that j is defined this one when x is part of with a x t plus delta x t u t part of with a u t plus delta t agree and t is that one t is equal to t. So, this trajectory what does it mean our job if you see this one we have to look for a optimal trajectory of u star agree which in turn this performing index will be minimized subject to this constraint. So, let us call whatever the u star is there u is the optimal trajectory around this u around this optimal trajectory u there is a, a neighborhood of u there is another trajectory agree and that trajectory if you consider that trajectory what is the and corresponding functional value of the objective function will be what corresponding to that part of trajectory when u is part of by u t of delta u of t. Similarly, with the control action of this one x will be also part of. So, I am writing this one now t 0 to t f and that time t final time is t it is part of with a delta t f agree then v and if x star is the optimal trajectory and we have given the perturbation of delta x t. Similarly, which u star is this and part of it u star of t. u star is the optimal trajectory and it is part of from the neighborhood of u star is delta u. So, which in turn x also will change from optimal trajectory x star to delta x t and this t plus delta s of this delta x whole transpose that an x dot. Because if you see 
this one, this is the value of this one, you find out this value of that one, differentiating away with respect to this along the trajectory of this one. So, this star plus x dot star plus delta x dot of t, this is the that part we have written, part of trajectory of that one. <coughs> then what is left? left the del s of del t whole star is there just that one plus this term plus lambda of t transpose then f x star of t delta x t plus u of t u star of t plus delta u of t then t. Agree? Minus x dot minus this f of x I am written this minus x dot is what is x dot? x dot star of t plus delta x dot of t. So, this of the integration d t. So, what I did it this suppose j is the value of the function. Now, I part of u by u plus delta u naturally x will be part of x plus delta u agree and then we are finding out here what is the new objective function when we part of the trajectory u star to u star plus delta u and x star to x star plus delta u. So, this <coughs> and the term is integration in t 0 to t delta t f, because our final time also that is changed to t f to delta t f. So, now <coughs> this is the objective function value, what is the incremental of in incremental functional value. So, one can find out this is nothing but a if you see this, this is nothing but a I can write it t 0 to t f l p means part of model part of functional l p dot of t d t. This whole thing is part of p stands for part of the whole thing is this. So, this I can write it equal to this is delta t f mind it agree. Okay. Now, whole thing I just can write it this that t 0 to t f l p dot d t plus t f to t f plus delta t f l p d t. So, it is a part of Lagrange function this l p. So, this I can write it nearly equal to if you this think of it this, this is as is it is t 0 to t f l p dot this d t and this is nothing but a l p is a functional square functional and area under this curve from t f to t f plus delta f. If you just consider just like this way it is a trajectory from <coughs> this is the t f agree and this is the your t f plus delta t f and this is our l p dot function agree. This is the l p I am plotting this function. Now, what is the area under this term t f to t f is nothing but a this whole thing. Okay. So, one can write this is nearly equal to find the ordinate of the Lagrangian function value at t is equal to t f. So, find L p this is L p what is called if you see this is L p and there is a another curve is that one, that one what is this one this is L dot this t is equal to t f this and this is the t is equal to 
that is T f to T f plus del delta T f. This is without part of Lagrangian function, without part of Lagrangian function. So, area actually I have to find out the area from here to here with a part of molar is same as I can write it is same as the area find out the function of the Lagrangian function value at t is equal to t f this function that means, this ordinate you find out multiplied by delta t f. So, this will be approximately because delta t f very close to t f. So, I can write the area under this curve is same nearly equal to area under the L p from T j f to T f plus delta f, T f plus delta f agree? that you can write it. So, that is why I am written nearly equal to that one. So, <coughs> if it is so, then I can what is the variation of functional value? Variation of function value delta j a, the variation of function value j a dot minus j dot is nothing but a t 0 to t f plus delta t f agree l p part of function Lagrangian function value this one j minus t 0 to t f that original Lagrangian function without perturbation this one this here. So, that just now we have concluded this part we can write it T 0 to T f L p dot d t and that is nearly equal to I can write it nearly equal to L dot value the finder value the um, value of the Lagrangian function T is equal to T f into delta T f minus T 0 to T f L dot delta T. So, you club this and this club together. So, this nearly equal to T 0 to T f L p dot minus L dot this d t plus L dot t is equal to T f delta T f agree. So, this we got it that that one. Now, we one can write it this <coughs> this is now as before we have discussed this this, this one agree. Now, what we can write it for this one this nearly equal to if you write more details T 0 to T f L p is what V L p is, is that L p function I am writing what is the function of L p is equal to x dot t plus delta x of t u star of t plus delta u of t again okay. is a function of this and lambda of t of t minus that one I am writing that is minus L function of x star of t u star of t lambda of t of this whole bracket d t. That this part in details I have written is the function of part of input and part of output again okay, that we have written and then left the remaining term is that one plus plus L x star of t u star of t lambda of t t bracket close find the value t is equal to at t f multiplied by delta t f. So, let us call this equation number is we have given equation number up to 8. So, now this equation is equation number 9. Now, see this one, this part, if you do the Taylor series expansion, then use the what is called chain rule, all these thing as we did in earlier, we can simplify this to first part of the integrand of that one, we can simplify. And 
how what is the final expression will come using I am just writing it using Taylor series expansion and integration by parts by parts rule we obtain. I do not want to repeat this one, because this we have already discussed when we have considered the functional j is equal to 0 to t 0 to t f v function of x t comma x dot t comma t d t when when we are deriving that of what is the necessary condition for the functional to be optimized there we have used that operation please refer that derivations then you will get it euler's equation so and if you take the first variation of that one if you take the first variation of this if you do the Taylor series expansion and take the first variation of the functional, then you will get del, del j is the first variation of the functional, first variation of the functional that equal to if you do the Taylor series expansion and use the what is called integration by parts and simplify then ultimately you will get the first variation this is the this delta j is the variation of the functional variation value variation of the functional okay. means when t 0 to t f plus delta t f and part of states uh, inputs are part of x in turn x also part of that is denoted by j minus without part of Lagrangian in integrand of the that Lagrangian function. Difference is first that is variation of functional. Out of this we split up into two parts that first variation of the functional, second variation of functional is there, third variation of functional is there and so on. So, we are just considering the first variation of functional for the necessary condition for the functional to be optimized. So, let us see that one what is the functional variation after simplification it will be t 0 to t f del l dot del x of t agree minus d of d t del l dot del x dot of t. So, this you compute at optimal trajectory at optimal trajectory this whole transpose delta x t d t plus some of the terms are remaining terms are like this del l del u because you will it will come from the what is called Taylor series expansion in first order terms agree. So, this star transpose del u of t. So, u is a vector of dimension m inputs if you consider u is a vector of dimension m inputs in the beginning if you see what we have considered that one here if you just no not this one here if you could say consider the our original function x of t u t x u is the number of inputs that m cross 1 x is the n cross 1 agree. So, the partial derivative of l with respect to u if l is a scalar thing u is a vector of m cross 1. So, this will be a, a vector. So, you have to transpose multiplied by delta then you will, you will get a scalar quantity that. So, this plus del this del x dot of t whole transpose star delta x of t 
agree and that is E is equal to E f. That is we have derived this, this by each substitution Taylor series expansion and substitution you will get this expression. Then now see you consider our that popular lemma that we consider that lemma is 0 to T 0 to T f. I am repeating this one once again. If you have a g of t, then delta x of t d t is equal to 0. So, g of t is a continuous function and it is differentiable each and every point in the interval this and delta x is the small change in that variable small element. If you integrate with respect to time t, that value will be 0 provided provided if and only if, if and only if g of t is equal to 0 at every point over the interval, at every point, point over the interval, over the interval t 0 to t f. So, <coughs> if you consider this equation number is 10. Again, okay. 9 we have done, if you consider this is equation number 10, then using this lemma, I can write this quantity will be 0 provided that this quantity is 0, if the delta x is not equal to 0, this equal to 0. So, our necessary condition just as before we did it that this del L del x of t minus d of d t del L dot del function of this del x dot capital X dot of t whole this is equal to 0. And what is the dimension of this one? L is a scalar, I am differentiating with respect to n with respect to x whose dimension in n cross 1. So, this dimension will be n cross 1. So, this star indicates that if you solve the differential equation, agree for that one you may need some other boundary condition. Let us call if you solve this one, then whatever the trajectory you will get it that is the optimal trajectory, the star indicates that the optimal trajectory of this one. So, let us call this equation is equation number 11. So, this part is 0. Now, you see when we have made an increment u start to delta u this, this is not equal to 0, this is not equal to 0 and this is independent of, this is the you can write independent, independent control variable. variable. Okay. So, this is not equal to this part. So, this must be equal to 0 in order to make that okay. our <coughs> d t is there here. If you see the last equation, there will be a d t is here, okay. d t here, you missed this one. So, this equal to will be 0. So, next condition is del L dot del u of t that compute along the trajectory if you do it this will be a 0 whose dimension is m cross 1 because u is dimension is m cross 1 I am differentiating with respect to scalar quantity. So, that will be m cross 1 let us call this equation is equation number 12. So, we have a you see when we have a two necessary condition this and this necessary condition you got. So, this is 0, this is 0 only the term is left with you with us is that one another term is left here because I have just uh, another term is left here the plus please please correct it plus l dot 
star l dot star t is equal to t f find out the l dot star by t f into delta t f this is that term if you recollect that that one we did it that is the this term this term because this we have done a taylor series expansion that one taylor series expansion of that that one and that term is th this one that term we missed it here so this so first term second term and third term what we got it due to the taylor series expansion of this this and this we got it up to this okay then what is the leftover term is there so our when you use the lemma this and this then we got it that what is called this equal to 0 and that equal to del l del l with respect to u 2 transpose that will be 0 that two necessary condition in addition to that still delta j first variation of the function is not 0 what is the finally left over with delta j finally we left over with delta j is equal to nearly equal to you can say that delta l dot star put l dot star or you can star you give it here t is equal to t f into delta t f plus del l dot del x dot whole star delta x t t is equal to t f that means x t f means x is equal to this is x x t f t is equal to t f ok. <coughs> so, that value is I can write it now this if you see this one our figure let us go back to our figure the optimal trajectory of this one this is our a this is our b this is our d and this is our c so this is our let us call t0 and this is our tf and this is our tf tf plus delta tf agree and this values is this value if you consider this value is and this value and that that we have considered delta x t f and this value we have considered delta x f as we discussed earlier. So, we can write it delta x f that means from this to this point that may coordinate of c and the this distance of that one is delta x f is equal to delta x t f plus a x a dot this is x capital x x a dot x a dot this is our x a of t this is our x star of t which is equal to x star of t plus delta x of t agree i just find out the slope at this point so this is nothing but is this slope is x dot type t is equal to t f multiplied by delta t f this i can write it that means this height plus this tangent at this one multiplied with this height is equal to delta x t f so this i can write it delta x t f plus what is this one i can write it delta a dot of this delta x dot we can write it delta x dot is equal to x x dot star t plus delta x dot t whole t is equal to t f delta t f. 
Now, see this is a small quantity, very small quantity, this is also small quantity, the product of this is you can neglect it. So, we can write it the nearly equal to this, we can write it delta x t f is equal to x dot star t f into delta t f. This product is third term, you neglect this one. So, this we can write it. So, now equation, what you got it equation 12 and then and let us call this is equation number that is that is equation number 13 you consider the equation number of 13 is that one. Okay. So, now use this value x t f x delta x t is equal to t f delta x t f I can use the value from here okay. using in using you can write it from 13 using this expression that means, I will write x, x delta t f is equal to x f minus of that one. So, what we can write it from 13 delta j is equal to l dot this star t is equal to t f and delta t f plus this one delta l dot x dot of t whole transpose star t is equal to t f. Now, I am writing x delta t f, this is x delta t f value is delta x f minus x dot star t f into delta t f. Okay. This equal to that, this is I am writing is that quantity in place of delta x t f I am writing is that quantity, if you see that one just like it is. So, this equal to we got it. Agree? Now, you see what we can write it delta t f delta t f if you consider together then what we can write it c simplifying that equation. If you simplify this equation I can write it or delta j is equal to l dot minus del dot del x dot of t whole transpose x dot of t x dot of t that whole star okay, the whole star then put t is equal to t f just I am I, I am writing that one this term plus this term into this term I am writing t is equal to 0. So, first is star I am writing is here you calculate the star then t is equal to t f then what you is left delta t f plus what is left only this term is left this term this and this term is left. So, that is I am writing is del l del x dot of t whole transpose star t is equal to t f is equal to delta x f. See this, this is delta x f delta x f. Now, in order to become this is 0 that means, what is the condition? The delta j first variation our necessary condition is if you see the optimum basic uh, necessary condition delta j must be 0. So, in order to make the necessary condition we got it two condition in addition to the two the third condition is that l this minus del l del x dot of t whole transpose x dot of t this 
agree star evaluate t is equal to t f delta t f plus delta dot delta x dot of t whole transpose star t is equal to t f delta x f is equal to 0 that means, j is equal to 0. So, our first variation you know to become first variation of this one this part is 0 this is one necessary condition and that part is 0 this second condition and third part is what is called that we got it that must be 0 and that depends on the our condition. Let us call our final time is fixed T f is fixed then T f is fixed means delta T f is 0 delta T f is 0. So, this is automatically 0. So, only an x T f is free that means, delta x f is not equal to 0 it must in order to make 0 this must be 0 agree. So, in other words you can say in other way you can say if T f is free and delta x f delta x f is fixed agree this is 0. So, this part will be 0 and T f is free mean delta T f is not delta T f is not 0. So, this must be 0 in order to make this is 0. So, let us call this equation number is equation number last equation we have given is equation number 13 if you see the 13 last. So, this is let us call equation number 14. So, <coughs> equation 14 equation 14 equation 14 is the general boundary condition in terms of lagrange gn function Okay. Now, if I summarize this one in order to optimize the our original problem where the terminal cost is there and the integral part of uh, term uh, we, what is called performing index is there in order to minimize that one and subject to the constraint x dot is equal to f of x comma u of t comma t then our necessary condition is first this you have to solve it once you form Lagrangian function then you calculate that 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 one or solve this one and also d l d l d l with respect to u is equal to 0 you solve this equation using the boundary condition of that one and this boundary condition if both the end point final point that means time is free the x of T f is also free then you have to you have to assume two boundary condition you will get this equal to 0 this equal to 0 agree. Okay? So, this indicates the equation number 11 equation number 11 12 and 14 need to be solved 14 need to be solved to obtain the to obtain the optimal solution to obtain to obtain the optimal u star of t and hence x star of t because u is independent variable that will drive the state in a optimal trajectories and hence x star of t. So, this is what we got it naturally I repeat once again what is the our problem was here from the very beginning just see this one agree. Okay. Okay, next class we will discuss the what is called that uh, using Hamiltonian function how we can solve that one problems.